Good morning, church. Whenever we face difficult circumstances, one of the things that we tend to ask is why. Why are we going through this time? Why did this happen? Is there someone we can blame? How much longer are we going to be able to um, maintain our life with this difficulty going on? And how much longer is the difficulty going to last? Our natural tendency is to start with that question, why? Last year, I did a series of messages going through the book of Job, because in the book of Job, we learn about a guy who's going through a lot of bad days, and he's asking the same questions that we would ask. And so if that's helpful to you, you can go back and listen to some of those messages or watch them. But today, I want to take you to John chapter 10. So throughout today's lesson, I keep referring to the passage as John chapter 10. It's actually John chapter 9, but I don't want to re-record the whole thing, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Because in John chapter 10, we see in clear detail a refreshing and a disturbing answer to the question, why? Take a look with me. It's in John chapter 10. We're going to begin in verse 1. It says, as he went along, this is talking about Jesus. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus' response is, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. There are a couple things I want to say about this. The first one is the most uh, disappointing kind of observation from this passage. It's when Jesus says that there is no one to blame except for God for the fact that this man is blind. You see, the disciples want to blame this man and his sin or his parents and their sin. The disciples want to know why is this man blind? Did he sin or did his parents sin to cause this blindness? And Jesus says, no, it's not because of sin. It's not because of this man. It's not because of his parents. It's because of God. Jesus says this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. The reason this is disturbing to us is that we have this mental picture that God is out there to just be our vending machine, that God is out there to be our blessing, God is out there to be our friend. We have this idea that God is out there to do good things for us, and that when we say God is good, what we mean is God does good things to me. But this happened, according to Jesus, so that. Now, just be clear on this. The words, so that, mean there's a purpose. When Jesus says this happened so that, Jesus is saying there's a purpose to this man's discomfort. There's a purpose to this man's impoverishment. There's a purpose to this man's suffering. There's a purpose to this man's blindness. This happened so that. There's a purpose to it. But it happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. It didn't happen so that he would be punished. It didn't happen so that uh, Satan would do mean things to this person. It happened so that God, so that God and his glory might be displayed in this man's life. One of the most difficult things that we have to face as human beings is this awareness, this recognition that maybe, just maybe, God is in the midst of our suffering and that God has for some reason caused the circumstance so that he could get glory. That's uncomfortable to us. We want God to cause things that bring me blessing, but sometimes God is responsible for something that brings temporary suffering because God is about to do something that brings amazing, influential, and eternal glory. Now, maybe you're familiar with the story. Maybe you're familiar with how the story ends. I'll just read a little bit more from verses 6 and 7. It says, After saying this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told them, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. 
So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Now, of course, that's great. But you know, when I was a little kid, I read this story and I was like, this is gross. Jesus is putting spit on the ground. Jesus is making mud with his own saliva and he's putting the mud on the man's eyes. Again, temporary suffering, temporary inconvenience, temporary discomfort, temporary grossness. And then Jesus says, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Now, as you continue to read the story, you, you understand that one of the reasons why Jesus does this thing where he puts mud on the man's eyes and tells him to go and wash is so that Jesus will be nowhere around the man when the man starts to be able to see. So that later on, Jesus can have this surprise reveal with the man. And that later on, when the man is testifying before the religious leaders, he can say, I don't know who the man is. I didn't even see him. But here's the deal. Jesus is also making another point in this story. Did you see it in the middle? Verse 4. Jesus says, as long as it's called day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. For a lot of you, you aren't working right now. For a lot of you, you are working, but in weird ways. Your work doesn't seem the same. It doesn't seem normal. It seems weird. Jesus says, as long as it's day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus' point is that one of these days, he is going to leave. He is the light of the world. And one of these days, he is going to leave the earth. And during that period of time, no one can work. I think he's talking about the three days he's in the tomb. But then when he comes back to life again, he is still the light of the world. And he's the light of the world today. But I think he's making an extended point. And his extended point is that sometimes you are going to be hindered from doing the work that God has called you to do. But that just means you need to take more advantage of the daylight when you have it. Whatever light you have, do the work of God in that light. There's a blind man. He didn't have much light, but Jesus gave him light. You and I are blind in the case of this coronavirus. We're blind in a lot of other public issues. And maybe you are also worried about something else going on in your own life. Jesus is your light. And as long as you can find light in him, you can find work to be doing for him. But let me bring it all the way back. Our question is why? Jesus, who can we blame? And Jesus' answer is, God will get glory. I think you might be in that place right now. And if you're facing that situation right now with regard to the coronavirus or some other stress or some other worry, I want to encourage you, as you are tempted to ask why, who can I blame, what should I do about it, I want to give you the answer Jesus gave you. This didn't happen because of your sin or someone else's sin. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in you. I don't know what God is going to try to do in and through you, but I know that what you are facing is partially because God wants to do his work in you. God wants to reveal his light in you, and God wants to reveal his light through you. Let me pray for you today. Lord, would you guide us? Would you give us your wisdom and insight today and help us to be the people who represent you well? We love you. Thank you for giving us this time together. We ask for your blessing on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>